brain, insomnia, headaches, irritability, anxiety, and depression. One in five women in the United States right now are antidepressant medication. Some people really need to be on medication. The, most of the people who need to be on medication aren't, and a lot of people that actually don't need to be on medication are over-medicated in my humble opinion. So there's a lot of people, it's a huge industry, the drug companies make billions and billions and billions of dollars putting people on medications, which they get us to believe we need because they show these commercials. They're not selling you a product, they're selling you an idea of what you should feel like. You know the lady who's in, in, in her backyard by herself and she's playing with the weird wooden doll? Have you seen this one? <laughs> this is bizarre. Like, you know, and, and you can relate to that and think, oh my God, like, am I that woman? And then her family's out playing softball, you know, they're having fun, and she's off by herself. And then she takes the magic pill, and then she's back playing, and then the wooden doll's by itself. I mean, the, the advertising genius is awesome. But, like, let's use that for good for the human race rather than just more stuff which is covering up some of these bigger problems. Now, again, a lot of people do need medication, and I talk with your physician if you're on them. I just want to create a bigger context. Um, cardiovascular disease and hypertension, asthma, allergies, and my personal favorites, reproductive organs for men, premature ejaculation and impotence. Hey, you know, Viagra is also one of the most profitable drugs. My father-in-law was just on vacation with the woman who created the actual pill, Viagra. He met her, they went to Nebraska to watch birds. There's like, it's like the biggest bird migration site in the world. It's actually really cool, but she was there. And he was like, yeah, I bet you don't have any financial worries whatsoever. And she's like, no. <laughs> I get like 10% royalty on annual sales. So, you know, uh, menstrual disorders, recurrent vaginal infections. You know, just like PMS is actually a normal phenomenon in women. It's when it gets so intense that people around you are like, <laughs> or PMDD, there's actually a diagnosis, premenstrual dysmorphic um, dysmorphic disorder where they actually prescribe antidepressant medication. A lot of that is because the hormones during chronic stress get so out of balance that come time when your hormones are now getting into this new rhythm as you go into the menses or your rhythm with the moon, that's what it means, the menstrual cycle is, has to do with the moon cycle, and then all of a sudden it gets all out of whack and you've got cramps and you're in pain and you can't move and can't do anything, a lot of that's actually related to stress. So, I know I'm giving you lots of bad news, but I have so much more better news that it's not <laughs> I, I mentioned the gastro, I mentioned the digestive stuff. If I say nothing else, your digestive tract is so tied in to how you perceive the world and to how we process stress. 90% of stress problems can go there. So it can be loose tools, constipation, you're regular, you got cramping, you got all these food allergies, you can't eat, blah, blah. A lot of that can be helped when we have new strategies to be more adaptable, to be more flexible. The challenge is, is stress also really affects our immune system. Has anybody here noticed they've gone through a really challenging period in life or a challenging period of work and you might get colds or flus more often? Anybody notice that? I, I have. I mean, I've personally been through a lot of this stuff. That's why I can speak the way I can. I have some academic knowledge to back it up, and also, unfortunately, I've learned the hard way with a lot of this stuff, or I learned the hard way, and that's why I'm so now passionate about teaching you guys now. So the immune system shuts down. Now, who here knows? So imagine you have a cell in your body, right? It turns into kind of a weird cell, and then it starts multiplying other weird cells. What is that process called? You, somebody said it before. What is that process called? It's the name of a disease. Okay. That's it. That's when those cells start to multiply and turn into nasty things. What part of our body fights that? Hints. The immune system. It has these cells called natural killer cells. It's like a Quentin Tarantino movie. It's like, uh, Roger that, we got one of those guys. So they go over like SWAT team. <coughs> The cells die, your body constantly has this balance of being able to figure out what to do to be able to help itself. When we have prolonged stress in our lives, we, our immune system weakens and it predisposes us to the risk of cancer. In fact, there was a study done at the University of London where they said that prolonged stress was actually more of a risk factor for heart disease and cancer than was smoking tobacco in a poor diet. Now, there's this Bart, no, that's Homer. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Homer. 
So what happens too is it's important to understand that in periods of stress, we start to gain weight and it becomes difficult <coughs> to lose. So people who gain, we call it central adiposity, which is just a simple way of saying that we build fat tissue here and, and, and women typically on the hips or, or the rear portion, also known as the butt. <laughs> so th this is what happens. And then it becomes a challenging thing because because of now your body's physiology is locked in this stress response, you can actually do the right diets and you can do the right exercise and still have a hard time. Or you can do all that stuff and find yourself getting so tired that you can't sustain it. So we see this thing, and that's why most studies show that 98%, for the most part, of diets fail. And when they fail, they tend to, when people gain the weight back, they tend to gain a little bit of the weight back. More importantly, you just your self-esteem kind of goes in the gutter because it's like, oh my god, like I tried and I failed and I tried and I failed, which feeds into the 80,000 ants. <clears throat> so again, sometimes exercise and diet are not enough. Who here's heard of cortisol? It's a hormone in your body. So you perceive stress, your brain goes, danger, sends a message to your adrenal glands, which sit right here, and your adrenal glands release adrenaline heard of this? It's like how a woman can lift up a car to get her baby out. Remember we were talking about the saber tooth tiger, same process. Then it says, okay, now release cortisol. That's the hormone that gets all that blood sugar in. That's the hormone that decreases pain. Long term, cortisol is highly detrimental to our health. It decays the brain cells associated with memory. It increases fat in the body. Um, it decreases energy levels. It predisposes to diabetes. And when that's the case, exercise and diet are often not enough. So, you know, typically, a hundred years ago, our big concerns were polio, typhus, measles, mumps, rubella, these infectious diseases that could single-handedly wipe out like 100,000 people at a clip. In fact, there's really good research that shows there was a much, much lower rates of cancer, heart disease, diabetes didn't really exist. But now what we have is sort of turn the tides. Now we have the diseases of modern civilization, which are all diseases of lifestyle. So these are the diseases of, and so much for the cell phone request. So the, we have diseases of civilization, which are basically these diseases of lifestyle. We've pretty much wiped out most of the other stuff, and now we've gone the other way. And now we're facing an unbelievably catastrophic healthcare situation where 70% of healthcare dollars are going to treat chronic preventative diseases, all of which go back to what I'm saying. And if now the solutions I start to give, if we were to start to adopt these as people, as individuals, not only can we heal health problems, not only can we start to feel really good again and have a very wonderful positive outlook about ourselves and about other people, as a culture we could actually completely rewrite the whole healthcare problem doesn't mean people don't get sick, but we have a whole different game now. So there's a couple different things we can do. One, we can change our lifestyle. You can exercise more. You can learn to meditate or, or sing in a church or pray or have friends. We can learn stress-reducing behaviors. We can change our thinking. It can be the ants. We can turn that tide around. We can change our behavior. We can do things differently. We can make different diet choices. We can do 